Hello and welcome to an exciting new edition of Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese. Uh, in this section, we're going to be looking at a lot of the old and more poetic Japanese that shows up in the Sailor Moon series. And by old and poetic sounding Japanese, uh, think King James Version of the Bible. Thou shalt go to the store. <laughs> Yes, Jesus said that sometime. We're going to be looking at some of the things that Neherenia and Chibiusa say in this episode of Sailor Stars from the Neherenia arc. Let's get started. Alright, so right off the bat, we're starting with Chibiusa's uh, time key incantation speech thing. So, Toki no Moribito yo. Toki is time. Toki no would be of time. Moribito. So if you look at the two kanji, um, it's like protection, to protect, and then person. So protect person. What do you think that means? Guardian. Uh, and then the yo at the end, we've covered this in a few previous lessons, uh, but it's sort of like if you're addressing someone with oh, so and so. So it's again, like King James version of the Bible, like, oh Lord. And it's like just the capital O comma and Lord, not O-H Lord, but O. So that's how I translated it. O, capital O, guardian of time. Jiku no tobira. So jiku, again, if you look at those two kanji, these are elementary level kanji. It's time and uh, the sky or air together. So time, time sky. It means space time, basically. Uh, tobira is door. So jiku no tobira, the door of space time, the door to space time. Tenku o saki. Saki is like the verb stem version of saku, which is to rip, tear apart. So again, this ku kanji coming back again, it's a uh, heavens or sky with sky <laughs> or air or space. Uh, so together, that means the heavens. So tenku o saki, rip apart the heavens. Um, and again, because she's saying saki instead of saite or saku or, or some other version of this verb, she's using like the verb stem version of the verb. That will come across as more poetic, but again, when I say poetic, I mean like King James version of the Bible poetic. <laughs> so it's like a poetic way, a King James version way of saying tear open, rip open, rip apart the heavens. We'll get to that later. Uh, and then ware ni, ware, again, it's a King James Bible <laughs> version of saying ni. <laughs> um, ware ni ake hanate. So ake is this verb stem of akeru to open. And then hanate is the um, imperative commanding form of hanatsu, which is to unleash or to release. So when you combine those two verbs together into what I like to call a super verb, um, it's to open, to unleash, basically. Imagine like, ta -ta! <laughs> um, so all of these words together rip apart the door of space time uh, and the heavens and then open, unleash it unto me. Ware ni. So again, I'm already kind of putting some of this more King James Bible-y <laughs> color in there with unto me. Um, this whole sentence sounds extremely like the King James version of the Bible. So I, it wouldn't be right for me to translate this as like, rip apart, uh, the have, rip apart the sky, open the door to space time um, and unleash it to me. Um, or open it to me. It's it's very plain sounding there. So I localize this as tear the heavens asunder, open the door of space time unto me. So it sounds a lot more like a cool, older, poetic King James <laughs> version of the Bible style speaking, because this is what Chibiusa sounds like in this speech. And of course, it's a huge contrast to the way she usually speaks as like a little girl. <laughs> Next line, ware wa, again, this ware, which is again a more like older, more poetic, think King James version of the Bible. Ware wa nanji. Now, this is a, an old poetic King James Bible version of you, so the or thou, basically. Uh, nanji no shin no na. Okay, so na again is like an older, more, more poetic, more King James Bible version of namae, which is name. If you say namae, that's normal. That's like normal colloquial speech, but just na is more poetic. So shin no is the true, 
And again, shin no is also kind of more poetic. Usually you'd say honto no, like the, the real for like casual speech, but shin no na. Um, it would be honto no no mae in like normal Japanese, but shin no na be your true name. Um, o yobu. So yobu is a verb that means to call. So again, I, I call your real name <laughs> in like more colloquial modern day speech, but this is not at all modern day speech. This is King James Bible <laughs> Japanese. So I call upon thy true name. Zen no naru toki no kami. So again, I think I mentioned this in the last episode of Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese, but anytime you have like, anytime you have like an adjective that ends in naru, like, oh yeah, koki naru, koki naru joyo, from the last episode we did of this, um, the disembodied voice talking to Neherenia over there. Um, anytime you have a, an, an adjective that kind of ends in naru, it, it makes it King James bible <laughs> So, zen no naru is almighty, toki no kami, uh, God, kami of time, toki. So, almighty God of time. Moribito no chichi, kuro no suyo. So again, this is kind of like the first line. Uh, moribito, we already know, is guardian. Chichi, father. Kronos, Kronos, one of the titans. Uh, and then yo, again, she's like, oh. Um, she's addressing Kronos. You don't have to literally go, oh, every single time you end something in yo. <laughs> Ware o michibiki tamae. So ware again, King James Bible ni ai. Okay, so this tamae ending, it's kind of like a kure or you know kudasai. It's like do this verb for me. But tamae is a, is again, it's a King James Bible way. <laughs> it's the King James Bible version of this. So ware o michibiki tamae. So michibiku is to guide somebody. So guide me. <laughs> but in King James Bible speech. Um, ware o mamori tamae. So again, this tamae ending for mamoru, which is to protect. So guide me and protect me, basically. It would be the way I'd say this in modern English, but this is not modern English. This is King James Bible <laughs> uh, way that she's speaking. So I translated it as be my guide, be my protector. It, it just sounds a little more poetic-y. Hikari no michi o ware ni. And there's no verb after this, but the verb is implied. So it would be like, ware ni ataete kure or something, or ataete, or atae tamae, or atae tamae. Um, ataeru is to like bestow, to grant unto somebody. Um, so hikari no michi, the path or the road of light. O ware ni, verb, grant, give. Um, it's implied. So, Grant the path of light unto me. Again, this unto uh, instead of to, unto just makes it sound a lot more like it's King James Bible. Incidentally, this is not at all like religious or Christian or anything. I'm just using um, the King James Bible way of um, writing, way of expressing language, just to express the kind of uh, sound of language that I'm seeing in this speech. All right. Not to say that this is at all Christian or at all like the Bible. It's just, this is just my point of reference. Uh, just make it sound like it's the King James Bible. <laughs> so, nanda, what? <laughs> what is that? Uh, so, again, this is an example of the way Japanese sentences sometimes get flip-flopped. Um, ano hikari wa nanda would be like the, the correct way that this sentence would be constructed. But she said nanda ano hikari wa. So it's like, what? What is that? That light. Um, so I just translated that as, what's that light? Because <laughs> that nuance sounds kind of weird in English. Disembodied voice says, goran nasai. So that's like a more like regal, polite, um, formal way of saying minasai. Like, just look at that. Anata no urami wa harasarete orimasen. So this orimas, orimasen ending two words, I think we're actually going to cover this in my Nihongo 2 series many lessons later. It's very formal Japanese. So it's basically um, the very, very formal version of imas or imasen that you'd add to the te form of a verb. Uh, to express that this verb is happening, this verb is in the state of happening. So, anata no urami. Urami is grudge, so your grudge. 
wa, as for your grudge, <laughs> harasarete orimasen. So, harasu, especially when you combine it with urami, urami o harasu, would mean to like to avenge uh, your grudge, to get revenge, basically, when you combine that verb with urami. To, to harasu is kind of like to make something like clear if you look at the kanji. Um, so, Basically, you remain unavenged is how I translated that just because it sounds more poetic, it sounds cooler, it's a lot cleaner. Like, your grudge has yet to be cleared. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't sound right. So, you remain unavenged. <laughs> and then Naharania says, Bapakana. So, baka, uh, you might know it as stupid or idiotic, foolish. Um, I just translated that as ridiculous. Yatsura wa tashka ni chijou ni ochita hazu. So, yatsura, <laughs> point of contention. So, yatsura can mean anything you want it to mean. It really is basically just um, sort of an insulting, rough, rude way of talking about a group of people, right? So, if Neherenia were not like an old queen, if she were like some valley girl and she called them Yatsura, I might have her say, those bitches. <laughs> or, you know, if if she were like, <laughs> if Usagi and her posse were like, I don't know, older, greasy mobster men or something, Neherenia might call them those bastards. And it's not necessarily vulgar, vulgar, like uh, English profanity is. So there's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of ways that you can translate Yatsura. I have a whole video on that on my other channel. Um, so anyway, Yatsura wa, those bad girls who I hate, uh, basically. Tashkani. So Tashkani is like, clearly, definitely, I know this, like I saw it with my own eyes, um, definitely. Chijou ni ochita. So Chijou is like the earth's surface. If you look at the two kanji, it's like earth above. So the earth's surface, ni ochita, uh, fell. So fell to the earth's surface. Hadzu. So if you add hadzu to the end of a sentence like that, it means I thought that, or they were supposed to, um, it was supposed to be the case that, da 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 da. So it's supposed to be the case that those bad girls who I hate very much and I'm insulting <laughs> fell to the earth. That's what that sentence means. So I just translated that as I saw them plummet to the earth. So again, another hadzu. So again, hadzu expresses like it should be like this. In the last sentence, ochita hadzu. It was supposed to be the fact that they fell. In this case, hazu ganai means it should not be the case. It shouldn't be the case. It should be impossible that. Um, ikite oru. So this orimas, orimasen. This is like the plain but very formal <laughs> version of an iru ending to a verb. So ikite iru or ikite du hazu ganai would be more a more contemporary way of expressing that. But Neherenia is older and more regal. She's a queen, so ikite oru hazu ganai. Like they shouldn't be alive. Um, and I translated that as they couldn't have survived. And then she restates that slightly differently. Ikite oru hazu wa nai no da. So this no da at the end is a very emphatic, like, so saith I. Um, I know I'm right. <laughs> like, Tashkani, I saw them, I know I saw them fall, plummet to their deaths, those bitches, Yatsura. Like, they, they couldn't have survived that. They shouldn't have survived that. Um, so that's why I kind of changed that nuance there from they couldn't have survived that to they shouldn't have survived that. It's just not fair. <laughs> um, and then the voice says, Jijitsu desu. So jijitsu means uh, like the truth or it's a fact. Um, so I translated, I took a little liberty, liberty here and translated it as but they did survive just because I'm following off of what Neherenia last said, they shouldn't have survived that. She said, ah, but they did survive. <laughs> it's like, but the truth is, you cannot ignore the truth and that is that they did survive. And it's like, that's the whole implication of this very, very, very short sentence, but I have to fit it into a very short subtitle. So, but they did survive. Um, Neherenia then, it's like, ah, I, I've had enough of you, disembodied voice. <laughs> so, nani ga, like, what is, uh, nerai, is your aim. 
basically. So what is your aim would be literally what that is. Um, but I just translate it as what is it you want or what do you want? Wara wa no nemuri o sama tageta no wa. So you might remember this from the very last episode. She was saying this exact same expression. Wara wa no nemuri o sama tageta. It's a verb I never use. So I'm like sama tageta. So um, sama tageru is like to to hinder. Uh, to disturb someone and then nemuri is sleep. Warawa is the very Naharenya King James Bible version way of saying I or me. So the one who hindered, disturbed my sleep. Wa as for disturbing, um, no wa, as for disturbing, as for the concept of disturbing my sleep, my slumber. Kono yona kutsu joku wo ajiwaseru tame ka. So kono yona e blank, like this, kono yona, this kind of, kutsujoku. Kutsujoku is a humiliation. And then ajiwa seru is the verb, um, it comes from ajiwau, which is to taste something. Ajiwa seru is to make someone else taste something. So she's asking disembodied voice, did you wake me from my slumber? Did you hinder my slumber? Just to make me taste um, humiliation, kono yona, like this, uh, tame, Ka. So tame is like for the sake of. So ajiwa seru tame, like did you m do this in order to make me taste this kind of kutsujoku, this kind of um, humiliation? Is that why you woke me from my slumber? And again, we've got um, samatageta, it's, it's a more poetic -y old kind of verb. Warawa, a very old King Jamesy kind of way of saying I. Kutsujoku is also like I don't see that word come up very often, except in song lyrics and poetry and stuff. Uh, so, and then the ka at the end with no like other particles, it feels a little bit commandy, queeny, King James Bible-y. <laughs> so, did you disturb my slumber just to humiliate me like this? I could have made it more poetic, I could have made it more King James Bible-y, and I might have done that in post, but for now I kept it simple. Did you disturb my slumber just to humiliate me like this? <laughs> Disembodied voice says, Shiranu ga. So you might remember whole from my Genki series. Um, so something X ga i means X is better. So she's forming her sentence this way. Shiranu ga. So shiranu in this case is to not know. Shiranai. It's more, it's a more King James Bible -y version way of saying shiranai. Shiranu. Shiranu ga. Not knowing. Yokatta. So that's the past tense of e. So would, would it have been better to not know? And then to osharu no desu ka. So osharu is a formal, polite way of saying to say something. Um, no desu ka, so she's being very polite, but kind of in a passive-aggressive evil way. <laughs> so, would you have preferred to remain in the dark? Um, I'm using, I, 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 I translated the uh, shiranu, shiranai, to not know. I translated that as being in the dark or remaining in the dark. It's an idiom in English that means to not know something, uh, to be oblivious. I used that for like a couple reasons. One, it just kind of sounds cooler, but two, Neherinia was previously in the darkness, like in her, you know, when she was banished. She was kind of floating around in her mirror world. It was dark. Um, so I, that's why I translated it that way, just for that reinforced metaphor and because it's an idiom in English that means not knowing. Anata wo fuin shita mono ga. So again, mono, we've come upon this so many times so far in, in this Sailor Stars episode. Uh, this kanji, if you look at the kanji for mono, it is not the same as thing mono, it is mono as in person or people. So anata wo fuin shita mono, so the person or people who fuin, who sealed, imprisoned you. Uh, incidentally, translating fuin as seal is one of my pet peeves. It should almost never be translated as seal. It just sounds like an envelope. It's not what it means. Um, so it's like to imprison, to banish. Um, so the people who, the ones who banished you, shikari to ikinobi. So ikinobi, um, ikiru is to live. The verb stem is iki. So ikinobiru is like to grow. Uh, to thrive. So like ikinobi together, like you're you're living and you're growing. So we have a verb for that, thriving basically. So shikarito is like firmly, strongly. It's kind of like, it almost sounds like um, 
a tree planting root like strongly and then thriving and growing. Um, heiwa ni kurashite iru koto. So this koto at the end is turning everything that comes before it into a concept. So heiwa ni kurasu is to live peacefully. Heiwa ni kurashite iru is to be living peacefully. And then heiwa ni kurashite iru koto is changing that basically into a noun, that whole concept of living peacefully as a noun <laughs> or as a concept. So, shikari to ikinobi, heiwa ni kurashite iru koto. The, the fact that, the concept of that, I'd say more like the fact that they, the ones who imprisoned you, are living and thriving firmly and strongly is kind of what that whole sentence means. I translated it as, would you rather not know that the ones who banished you are thriving in peace? So I, I extended that. She asked in the first sentence, would you have preferred to remain in the dark? Would you rather not know that the ones who banished you are thriving in peace? It's kind of an extension of that first question, which is why I started this next line as, you know, part two of that question by adding that would you again. It's just more natural English this way. <laughs> So kateru, kateru. So kateru comes from katsu, which simply means to win. Kateru is the potential version of that. Uh, I can do this verb, so I can win. Katenakatta means I couldn't win. So katenakatta toyu. Katenakatta toyu no ka. So this toyu no ka is, are you saying that? Uh, or so it is the case that. Um, I couldn't have won. So it's like, was there no way for me to win? Was it pointless? Was it futile? Um, I translated it for the time being as so I couldn't have won, but I don't know, maybe I came up with something better since then. Um, yatsu ni wa nani hitotsu toshite, and she's being very bitter about it and clenching her fist. And again, this yatsu, um, it's referring Yatsura, she said last time, those bitches, those evil Sailor Moon and her posse who I hate and they're terrible and I'm insulting them and oh, I hate them so much. Yatsu is singular though, so she's talking about one of them. And we can assume, we can assume she's talking about Sailor Moon here. So Yatsu, damn Sailor Moon, curse Sailor Moon, effing Sailor Moon, <laughs> depending on what kind of person Neherenia is and what kind of show this is. So much context goes into this word. Um, yatsu ni wa nani hitotsu toshite, and then usually this would follow up with a lot of verbs. Like, I couldn't do one thing to her, to verb her, but the verb is omitted, so we have to fill in the blank of what the verb is. Um, I couldn't have done anything to, to stop her, probably, is just kind of where my brain goes. I couldn't have done anything to thwart her. Not a single thing, nani hitotsu toshite. And then disembodied voice is like, yeah, I got her. I got her wrapped around my little finger now. She's mine. <laughs> and she goes, she goes in for the kill. Oh, aware na shingetsu no jo. Oh, aware na yo. <laughs> so, oh, oh. Um, aware na is like poor, uh, pitiful. Uh, and it's a poetic -y word. Shingetsu is the new moon. No jo. So, jo. <laughs> Very long vowel. Queen, yo. Again, this, I'm addressing you with an O, like King James Bible O. So, O, oh, tragic queen of the new moon. Sono utsukushi ki kurogami. So, utsukushi ki. This is yet another um, old Japanese thing. King James Bible Japanese, where if it's an E adjective, like utsukushi in modern Japanese, if you change that E at the end of an E adjective to a ki, it's basically the same thing, but just older, more poetic, more biblical Japanese. So, utsuk sono utsukushi kurokami is how we'd say it in modern Japanese. Sono utsukushi ki kurokami, that beautiful black hair of yours. Sono Uruashiki, she's doing this key again. It would be Uruashi, but in old King James Japanese, Uruashiki. Uh, hitomi, eyes, koso. So this koso came up before, I think in the very last episode. Um, your beautiful black hair, your Uruashiki, or Uruashi is another word for beautiful, basically. Your beautiful golden king iro no hitomi, your beautiful golden eyes, koso. So it is your 
black, your beautiful black hair and your beautiful golden eyes, those are the things that should we're going to complete the thought in the next part of the sentence. So your beautiful black hair, your gold, gorgeous golden eyes, dot, dot, dot. Finish that thought. Honrai ano aoki hoshi no jōō no na ni fusawa shiki mono. In contemporary Japanese, this um, fusawa shiki would be fusawa shi i, and it means to be suitable. Um, so fusawa shiki mono. Honrai. So that's sort of like ideally or what what should actually be the case um, in in parallel universe land where everything is just and everything is correct. Honrai wa um, ano aoki hoshi that blue planet. So instead of aoi hoshi, aoki hoshi, that blue planet no jo uh, queen the queen of that blue planet no na. So again namae in regular Japanese na in older Japanese. Nifusawashi, so suitable for the name of the queen of, there's so many no's, you have to work backwards, um, that blue planet. So ordinarily, in a perfect world, in an ideal universe, um, it would be your beautiful black hair and your beautiful golden eyes. Koso, it, it is you, it is you, Koso, who really should be honrai. Um, the queen. You, you are the one that is more suitable to be the queen of that beautiful blue planet. Not Usagi. No, no. So that whole thought, those two sentences together, your beautiful black hair, your gorgeous golden eyes, you are far worthier to be queen of the blue planet. I kind of omitted that whole your name, uh, more suited to be called queen. It was just a little too wordy. Maybe I changed it in post. Who knows? It is really hard translating this kind of Japanese, by the way, because <laughs> it's really hard to write in this kind of English. So we've covered some of these words before. Huinsta, banished, imprisoned, sealed. Yami, darkness. So yami ni huinsta, uh, imprisoned you in the darkness. Kodoku no yami, so solitary, kodoku, solitary darkness, so banished you, imprisoned you in solitary darkness, kodoku no yami ni huin shita. Um, tsumetaki, again, tsumetai in modern Japanese, tsumetaki in older biblical Japanese, so cold, the cold, uh, lonely darkness, sealed you, banished you, imprisoned you in cold, lonely darkness. Anata wo. This is part one <laughs> of a very long sentence. So let's move on to part two of this sentence. Ano mono domo. So mono, again, person. Mono domo, if anytime you add domo to something, it means like there's there's more than one of them. So those those people. Um, o yuruseru no desu ka? So she's asking a question, <laughs> and we finally get to the verb. Um, so yuruseru is the potential version of yurusu, which is often, again, another translator pet peeve, it's often translated as to forgive. In old school ghoul Sailor Moon translations, they often say yurusenai. Um, Sailor Moon does, like in, in her speeches to the villains, yurusenai, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> when she's giving her speeches. Uh, and it's often translated as I won't forgive you or I can't forgive you. That's really not the best translation of that. Um, yurusu in this case is to permit or to allow uh, someone to get away with something, basically. Um, so yuruseru no desu ka? Can you let them get away with um, ano monodomo, those people? Um, can you let those people get away with imprisoning you, huin shita, inside of that cold, lonely darkness. So as you see, when you translate this entire line, basically everything just flips. <laughs> you kind of just do the whole thing backwards. So the whole thought, if, if I had the liberty to translate it as one super long line and I didn't have to worry about breaking up subtitles, it would be something like that. Can, can you, are you going to let them get away with um, imprisoning you in that cold, lonely uh, darkness? Um, but I had to break it up into two subtitles that kind of make more sense. So I did the first part as, and they dared banish you to a cold, solitary prison, period. <laughs> so there's no more run-on sentence anymore. Are you going to let them get away with it? Uh, and I kept that, are you going to let them get away with it? 
part isolated because it's isolated like that in the Japanese as well. That line was, あの,ものどもを許せるのですか By itself, it makes a complete sentence. Are you going to let them get away with it? And I wanted to keep that isolated by itself so we really get to the heart. This, this is what disembodied voice is trying to do to Neherenia. She's trying to make Neherenia angry, bitter, um, feel like she was robbed, like she should be the queen, and then, hey, are you going to let them get away with that? Y you, should, uh, you should go do some evil. Do some evil stuff. Go, go, go kill them. <laughs> so that's why that line was isolated. Nikui no desho. So nikui is, is hate, despise. Um, and it's actually an adjective, it's not a verb, but I'm going to translate it as a verb. To hate, the verb. Um, no desho. Like, you hate them, don't you? Anata wo sashi oite. So sashi oite uh, is to cast someone aside or to, to leave someone. So they cast you aside. Chijou de no no to ai to kofuku wo kyouju shiteiru ano mono domo ga. More run on sentences. We, I love translating run on sentences. So chijou de, we already learned earlier, chijou is like the earth's surface. No no to is like carefree, la 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 la. <laughs> um, ai to kofuku. So ai is agape love or just pure love. Kofuku is like um, bliss, um, good fortune. And then kyouju shiteiru. Kyouju shiteiru and like the kofuku like and no no, they all kind of go together. They all kind of mean the same thing. It means to like to live, you know, peacefully and blissfully without care basically and like prospering and stuff. So again, this is like part of a sentence. Uh, it goes with the anata o sashi oite. So it's actually anata o sashi oite chijou de no no to ai to kofuku wo kyouju shiteiru ano mono domo ga. So it's like a whole big run-on sentence that doesn't work very well um, when you're subtitling. So that's why I split it into two different parts. They cast you aside, comma, while they, free from care, live in love and happiness in the light. So I translated the chijo uh, de um, on the Earth's, Earth's surface as in the light. Again, just to reinforce that metaphor that Neherenia was imprisoned in the darkness, darkness and light. Uh, despair and hope, <laughs> you know, that colorful metaphorical language. And of course, if you're on the Earth's surface, you're going to be in the light. The sun and the moon are going to be shining down upon you. They're not shining on Neherenia. She's in her dark, lonely, cold prison. So I expressed the chijou de, like on the Earth's surface, as just in the light, in the light of day, basically, on the surface of the Earth where you would be able to experience the light of day. You just... You just... And then this is a part that I actually kind of struggled with when I was uh, figuring out how I wanted to translate this part. Neherenia just says this over and over again. She says, Yuru senu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She says yuru senu eight times and then screams yuru sen. <laughs> so like nine times, just over and over again. It has to sound kind of cool. It has to sound scary because she's like getting hypnotized and her eyes are glowing and stuff and she's going to break out of her prison. Um, so again, this yuru senu, uh, again, the nu, yuru senai would be how, I, how you'd say it in contemporary Japanese. But you replace the nai with nu to make it more like poetic King Jamesy Japanese. So yuru senai, I cannot uh, permit it. I cannot allow them. I can't let them. I can't let them get away with it. They won't get away with it. Uh, they'll pay. I often translate yuru senai as they'll pay or they'll pay dearly. Or even like I'll have my revenge. That's generally what this means in this context, this yuru senai. Um, I wanted to make it sort of the same number of syllables similarly um, because it's awkward if the subtitle is like 10 words long and it's just yuru senu. <laughs> so I finally settled on they shall pay, they shall pay, they shall pay. Um, I'll make them pay I think would be kind of cooler but again that's too many syllables. Maybe I changed it in post. Who knows what I eventually went with. <laughs> Something cool. Um, but yeah, that's where we are leaving off uh, in this installment of Watch Sailor Stars Learn Japanese. Cliffhanger, right? Neherenia is riled up and she's getting ready to stir some poop. <laughs>
<laughs> so thanks for watching and thank you to the patrons uh, who make this series and other series on this channel possible. You can support this series uh, for as little as $2 a month on my Patreon and you get some supplementary Sailor Moon translations uh, with it. I just sent out, in fact, today, earlier today, uh, the image song of Sailor Starfighter. I did a translation breakdown pretty much like what I did in this video. I went through each word one word at a time and explained how to translate it. So if that sort of thing interests you, you can join that group for just two dollars a month. Or you can keep watching these videos for free and that's totally cool too. Tsukino hikari wa message.